mobile field kitchen. While concealed from the enemy, it is well known by friendly troops. In fact, soldiers will rotate through here at least three times a day for the essential food services that are provided. day might include shift work with daily assignments. Besides preparing food, he might be tasked to pick up rations at a delivery point, set up or break down camp, clean and maintain equipment, or assist with planning for a new location and a move. It is not only a workplace, but during busy times it can be the only scenery a cook sees for days. The chief cook is also responsible for the cleanliness and security of the field kitchen site. Field kitchens may be classified as two types according to their intended use. The terms temporary and semi-permanent are commonly used. Each type supports a different kind of operation. Temporary kitchens are located in forward areas under combat conditions. Since they are subject to frequent moves, often on short notice, they are not elaborate in organization or facilities. They may even move forward into a specific location, feed the troops, and move back again as quickly as possible. A temporary kitchen may not allow for a dining tent. Even tables and benches may be omitted. Troops' comfort is definitely less important than efficient feeding in the temporary field kitchen. The field kitchen site is selected in consultation with the unit senior cook. The ground site should be elevated and on well-drained ground. It should be concealed by natural cover or artificial camouflage. A wisely chosen site can simplify the job of concealment. The kitchen must be accessible to the transportation network for ration resupply and it should be upwind. The setup is based on the relation of the kitchen to the prevailing winds. The kitchen must be a minimum of 50 meters from the main tented area, the bivouac. The serving area should be set up so the troops travel from bivouac area to pre-dip through a meal line and proceed to mess tent. The dishwashing area should be set up near the messing area, but not away from the kitchen proper. Disposal areas should be within easy reach, but downwind from the kitchen and dining areas. Latrines and incinerators should not be located closer than 100 meters from the kitchen. Here, troops can return to their vehicles or the bivouac. Fuel storage should not be closer than 30 meters to the kitchen, the filling area 20 meters, and the lighting area 10 meters. The water supply should be convenient to the kitchen where use can be controlled. Immersion heaters should be between the kitchen and the dishwashing area, close to the water supply. Ration storage and administration are close to the preparation and cooking areas and convenient to the road network for deliveries. While there are many considerations to the location of the field kitchen setup, the step-by-step -step procedure of assembling the kitchen trailer remains the same. After the lights and chains are unhooked, the trailer is pushed back from the truck and the wheel is dropped and locked into place. The handbrakes are applied and the rear leg or safety leg is lowered. All four corner legs are then lowered and secured with pins. A hand crank is used to extend the legs to the ground. The side panels of the tarp are unfastened so the levels can be seen. 
The trailer is then leveled and the tools put away. The walkways for the serving lines are lowered on all four sides. They are braced to the corners and latched into place. The tarp is neatly rolled from all sides so the top can be easily lifted into place and secured. Lift. The steps are attached according to the serving line format and handrails are installed. The tarp is supported by poles which are joined by side rails. The side panels are attached and secured on the inside with lacing and Velcro fasteners and with clips on the outside. The services are then hooked up between the truck and the trailer. The propane hose is run from the tank on the truck to the hookup under the trailer. The stoves can be hooked up and used immediately. The electrical cord is hooked up to the MLVW and run to the electrical box under the trailer. The setup of a semi-permanent field kitchen trailer is complete. The M2 burner is the workhorse of a field kitchen. It can either be set up for the traditional gasoline or now for propane. It is a multi-purpose burner with one of its uses being to heat the pre-dip. The purpose of pre-dip is to preheat, wash and sanitize. The serving lines are important to traffic flow. They must be organized to make food service as simple as possible. In a mobile field kitchen, the serving line is set up inside the trailer. It is accessible to personnel from the side. Cold foods may be served from one side, hot foods from the other. The trailer can be entered from either end, but traffic is always one way. For serving in non-tactical areas, the U-shaped traffic flow is best. Once diners are served, they move to the dining area. The dining facilities depend on the number of troops being served. If there is a large number of troops, the senior NCOs and officers would have a separate dining area. In a small group, everyone would eat in the same tent. In the semi-permanent kitchen, hot meals are prepared and transported to forward areas in insulated containers called hay boxes. If the situation permits, salads, desserts and beverages are set out in the dining tent for self-service. If there are no dining tents, these items would be next to the trailer on a table. Meal time means more than just hot food. Here, the troops can relax and socialize before resuming their duties. After reading, diners carry their dishes and utensils to the dishwashing area called mess tin laundry. Everyone scrapes his own dishes, then washes them. First in soapy water, then clean rinse water, and finally in a sanitizing rinse. The water supply and food storage area should be convenient to the kitchen. Generally, it's to the rear of the kitchen, where use can be controlled. Water is usually supplied from formation water points or an existing building. In either case, the kitchen should have convenient access to a source of water. There are good reasons why the entire field kitchen is under constant watch. It takes that kind of effort to maintain a high level of security. Security that provides peace of mind. That's something you really appreciate, especially when you have a few minutes of personal time to enjoy. The bivouac, or sleeping area, is upwind of the kitchen at least 50 meters. 
Each area has a fire picket station. The field doesn't have the luxuries of home, but what you do have, you don't want to lose to fire. Hot water is a vital commodity in a field kitchen, for without it, acceptable sanitation cannot be maintained. An immersion heater is the simple piece of equipment used in the field. It heats a large amount of water quickly and maintains it at a usable temperature. The immersion heater is fueled by leaded gas. Lighting is not difficult if instructions are followed carefully. Water heated by the immersion heater is normally used for cleaning, especially washing pots and dishes, not for cooking. Water for cooking is heated in the trailer on the M2 burner. The principles of hygiene are very important in the field. Because troops congregate at the field kitchen at least three times a day, disease would spread rapidly once it started. Every field cook has a part to play to ensure that personal hygiene is excellent. Food is correctly stored, prepared, and served. Equipment is sanitized. Food is handled as little as possible. If these principles are followed, the possibility of food contamination in the kitchen is minimal. Equally important for a healthy camp is hygienic and immediate waste disposal. Liquids such as cooking water and mess tin laundry are disposed of in liquid swill pits that are dug at least 25 meters from the kitchen. The tactical method of disposing of solid wastes is to burn and bury. However, local environmental restrictions must be considered in peacetime, and often solid and liquid wastes are trucked away. The location of the latrine is critical to promoting good sanitation. It must be at least 100 meters downwind from the kitchen, with a wash area close to the site so that personnel can wash immediately after leaving the latrine. Setting up and running an efficient field kitchen is a complex task. And while a kitchen can be set up almost anywhere, changing requirements and surroundings will make each one unique. Only one thing remains constant, the purpose, to provide the best meals possible in this field environment.